Making the perfect pizza takes a lot of ingredients. You need your dough, your sauce, your cheese. You need your love, your dedication, your experience, and your patience. Now some people might think that the dough, sauce, and cheese are the most important ingredients in a pizza, but me, as a true pizza making expert, I would say that those people are probably right. You're not gonna get very far without the dough, sauce, and cheese. What is going on TFG squad? My name is Brandon and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make the perfect pizza using ingredients that we all have in our own house. So we're all stuck inside on quarantine. So I figured this would be the perfect time to show you guys a recipe that I've been making since I was a little kid with my mom. I've got my Italian stallion shirt on so you guys all believe that I'm legitimate and I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna take you through how I make my dough from scratch. I'm gonna make my sauce from scratch. I'm gonna make my cheese from the grocery store, but we're gonna ignore that. I even have a basil plant at home. So basically 99% of this sauce and this pizza is gonna be made from my own home. I hope you guys enjoy. So the first step is we have to make the dough. Now we make the dough first because we have to put it off to the side and let it sit for a little while. I'm gonna be making two personal pizzas, one for me and one for Sam. So the first step is to make the dough and then split it into two separate dough balls. <laughs> oh, I said balls. Two round dough circles. <laughs> circles. It reminds me of balls. Two spherical round things of dough. Let's just get started. So the main ingredient in dough is flour. So I actually like to use this flour mainly because it's got an Italian lady on it. So you know it's official. Now a true Italian chef like myself knows that you don't really measure. I just kind of, let's just kind of do a little bit of that. That should be plenty for dough. Also, every true Italian pizza chef knows that the better the chef, the messier the chef. So you can either let it happen naturally or me personally. I just like to grab a little bit of flour and just kind of throw it on my shirt. So now I'm good to go. This, this makes for a better pizza, guys. Trust me, let me put a little extra and then maybe a little bit of my hair. All right. Good to go to make a good dough now, guys. All right, the next ingredient for the dough is gonna be uh, Fleshman's Active Dry Yeast. Now this is what's gonna make the dough rise. I like to buy Fleshman's because it's the only brand that they sell at my grocery store. I'm gonna rip open the packet and you could measure. I'm just gonna dump the whole thing in. Yeah, looks perfect to me. And then to activate the yeast, you need to get warm water. So it's supposed to be 110 degrees but uh, you know me with measuring and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna turn the faucet on high and I'm gonna pour it in here. And uh, yeah, this is probably not gonna come out too good, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's go. All right, do a little spritzerewski. Hopefully that was enough and not too much. Uh, then you gotta put some salt, right? So uh, just throw a little salt. Oh geez, that was a lot of salt. You actually sprinkle a little bit of sugar in there, which a lot of people don't know about. So let's put a little bit of sugar in there. All right, perfect. That actually activates the yeast in addition to the water. And then last thing, I like to put a little bit of olive oil in there. So let's pour just a touch of olive oil in there. Be ah, we're having fun today. A little extra olive oil in there. Now the next thing you do is extremely important. When making a good pizza dough, listen to SpongeBob's advice. I need it! Thank you, SpongeBob. All right, so I'm just gonna take his advice and I'm gonna knead the dough and you should knead it for like a good five to 10 minutes, guys. It's gonna be a good forearm workout. Also, if you don't think the consistency is good, you could add a little bit more water or a little bit more flour to either make it kind of more runny or a little bit more thick. Like right now, clearly I added a little too much water because uh, it's, yeah, this is, this is not right. Once your dough's kind of a regular consistency, you ditch the bowl. So I already cleaned the surface, especially right now, you wanna make sure it's clean. And I also put just a little bit of flour on the table to kind of give me a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, it's what all the chefs do. So I'm just copying them basically. So let's spread this around. Let's knead the dough. Like I said, guys, the bigger the mess, the better. So you can see the more I knead it, Look at this, now we're actually starting to get a pizza dough. So I'm gonna knead it a little bit longer. Remember, we're gonna do the two balls thing, which always makes me laugh. Two separate balls for two separate pizzas, and then we're gonna let this sit for like a good hour or so while we're making the sauce. Uh, 
And there we go. So we have our two dough balls all ready to go. I usually throw them in a bowl that I kind of grease with oil. So you put one in one bowl, one in the other. And actually another really important thing that all true pizza chefs do, you gotta taste a little bit of the dough just to make sure it's good. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. We're gonna be making a good pizza today, guys. All right, I'm gonna cover this just with a couple little paper towels. You can use um, dish towels too, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna cover these bad boys. We're gonna let them sit for a couple hours and let them rise. All right, so the next step, we're actually gonna make the sauce. Now the ingredients for the sauce are simple. Salt, pepper, two cans of tomatoes, garlic, olive oil, sugar, and, uh, and basil. Maybe I should have gotten a fresh basil plant. All right, so the first step in making a perfect sauce is we gotta chop up the garlic. So one thing I will say, if you're a young, immature individual such as myself, when wielding a giant knife like this, make sure you get parental supervision. Hey, mom! Mom! I guess I'm on my own for this one. So I got the garlic all peeled and ready to chop. Now most sauce recipes call for three, maybe four little things of garlic, but my Nona, back in the day, used to always tell me, il tuo naso e grande, which I don't know what that meant, but I assume it meant use more garlic than everybody else. I really need to learn Italian. All right, so the garlic is all chopped and ready to go. Now for my favorite part of making a sauce. Listen closely. My favorite part of making a sauce is opening the tomato cans. Join me. So Sam actually bought one of these bad boys a couple years ago. It's a magical device called an electric can opener. Guys, I love this bad boy. Basically, you take the can of tomatoes, you stick it right here, you go like this, and then you wait about four seconds and watch this. There's another special mechanism here. When it's done, it's got something on the top called a magnet. I know I'm dropping some serious scientific knowledge on you guys. I lift this up, boom, and the top sticks to the magnet. This is one of my favorite things of all time. I'm not even joking. I'm gonna uncan the other one and then we'll get started with the sauce. I don't know how it works guys, it's magic. Let's not argue with it. Every time. It works every time. So now that we have our tomato cans opened, we have to do my least favorite part about making the sauce. We gotta chop up the tomatoes. So basically, you can't throw a tomato in like this into your sauce, or else it's not gonna be a sauce. So you gotta kinda peel it apart and you gotta rip off the tops of the tomatoes because they're hard and chewy. But the problem with this is, your hands get messy, and I don't like when my hands get messy because I have OCD, and it's just annoying. But you know what? For the sake of this video and for the sake of the sauce, let me break apart the tomatoes. Oh! I'm hit! I've been hit! Oh, at least it didn't get on my face. Um, well, I guess this plays into my theory that the messier the chef, the better because I have made one heck of a mess, and I think I'm the greatest chef in the world. I am better than any chef, even in Italy, at making pizza, no doubt about that. We are on the final tomato. Oh my goodness, okay, all right, that was terrible. Then we're gonna save the tomato juice because that's going in the sauce too. I mean, just look at my hands right now. My hands are disgusting. It's all over my shirt. It's all over the table. I hate that step, but you know what? It's over with. So now we're gonna put the oil in the pan. We're gonna start the garlic and we're gonna start making this sauce. All right, so we have the garlic sauteing in the pan. We wanna wait until it starts to get a little caramelized color, and then we're gonna add the tomatoes. That actually reminds me of another thing my late Nona used to say to me. She used to say, Brandon, tuzi chooch. And again, I don't know exactly what that meant, but I think it meant something along the lines of, once the garlic gets brown, then you add the tomatoes. I think we're just about good to go. I'm squatting because I have my camera on a tripod, so I'm building my leg muscles right now. Normally I don't do that when I make a sauce. Uh, so first we're gonna do, 
We're gonna add the tomato juice left over from the cans. Make sure you don't, uh, you know, splash it into your eyes because it is like boiling oil. And then we're gonna add the tomatoes that I just kind of peeled apart a couple minutes ago. So we're gonna add that. All right, beautiful. We're gonna mix this up just for about a minute and then we're gonna add all the ingredients that go along with the sauce. So the sauce has been properly stirred. Now I'm gonna add all the ingredients that go along with it. So first, we're gonna add the salt. Again, I don't really measure, so sometimes it's too salty, sometimes it's not salty enough, most times it's just right. So we're gonna add some salt. You put a pretty good amount of salt. Again, you could always add more later, so I would say put less rather than more. Next, we're gonna add the pepper, and I love pepper. I love pepper. And Sam sometimes doesn't like spice, but I always add more anyway. So we're gonna put a good dose of pepper in there. Um, la -da -da, da 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 Oops, I got distracted. All right, that'll be, oh man, I put a lot. <laughs> Sam's not gonna be happy. All right, next thing, again, we put a little pinch of sugar just to get rid of any bitterness from the tomatoes. So put a little, bloop, beautiful. And then the last thing we will add to the sauce is basil. But since I'm using fresh basil, we're not gonna add it until the end. Let's stir this bad boy up. And then we make it go low and slow. So you put the heat very low and you let it simmer for a long time. All right, guys, the sauce is just about done. It's been simmering for a while now. Let's actually go check on our dough. The dough's good. The dough has just about maybe doubled in size, which is perfect. So I'm gonna turn the sauce off. All we have to do is wait for Sam to finish up with work for the day. And then we're gonna fire up the oven and start making those pizzas. All right, so Sam just got home from work. So the first step is I'm gonna cut the cheese. All right, no, not that kind of cheese. I'm actually gonna cut the mozzarella cheese that I got. So I'm gonna chop this up. Then I'm gonna pick a little bit of the basil off and then we're gonna fire up that oven and get going. So this past Christmas, Sam surprised me with a pizza oven that's outside and it's wood burning. Well, I got that bad boy fired up and I wanna show you guys what it looks like. It's pretty exciting. Makes for an outstanding pizza. Greatest dough worker east side of the Mississippi. Ah! Ah! Now, all we have to do is throw it in the oven and get ready to eat. All right, so I left it in a second too long, but I love it well done. Sam's I won't cook as long. Now all we have to do is top it with a couple little things of fresh basil. I love it thin and crispy. I don't have the big thick crust, so that's why it's so tiny. Cut this bad boy. One. Two. And it's ready to eat, boys. That's outstanding. Don't forget to do the dishes. <laughs>